Why don't we bring up our, our handy dandy whiteboard and everyone can laugh at how horribly I draw and write things. First is a concept of mounting and collecting your file system together, right? So the whole point of the Linux file system hierarchy is that when we look at like slash or underneath of it, like slash home or slash user or slash var to a user or process navigating the directory structure to get access to a file. They just want to be able to work a path down to the file or directory that they want and then do stuff with it. In reality, as administrators, we know that this directory structure is actually built out of component devices. So it might be that var here is actually stored on a disk that's dev sdb4. And inside of dev sdb4, we've applied a file system format, right? So we formatted this space so that we could effectively store files and retrieve files from it because nobody really cares about what their file system is, whether it's XFS or ext3 or ext4 or butterfs. No one really cares. Okay. Conan Some Kudo people cares, care. But, but most people don't care unless they put something in a file system and they can't get it back out again. Then they really care about file systems and devices. All right, we're not going to go into all the different file systems and the benefits of choosing one over another. Sufficient today is saying, hey, down on DevSDB4 here, there's actually like places where we can store data. And there's places where you can store file metadata. And there was probably more data down in here. And overall, this thing has some like finite disk space, right? Maybe when we created this partition DevSDB4, we said it should be 15 gigs of space. So when we put things in var, we're actually using some of that 15 gigs of space. And down inside of that file system format, there's data blocks. We're actually storing the file contents. And then there's a thing called an inode, or for lack of a better word, a file pointer that will track things like it's metadata, right? What data blocks store the actual contents of this file? Give me the addresses of those data blocks. What are the permissions on this file? Who owns this file? What are the SE Linux contexts of this file? All that gets, stuff gets stored in the inode, which tracks all the metadata for the file that has been placed in the data blocks of this file system. All right, so just to wrap up on this small bit here, your directory structure is actually a collection of devices. Could just be one, but could be many. And it's supposed to be invisible to your users and processes, right? They just need to go into home and their directory and there are all their files. They shouldn't need to care that those files live on this disk drive versus that disk drive, or it's a partition or it's a logical volume or it's stored from a stand somewhere. Like they shouldn't care about the backend mechanics of where that file lives us as the operating system people or system administrators probably need to care, but users and processes don't need to care. All right. So that's one thing. We have this file system format. The other thing to think about is if we actually look more closely at what that looks like. Here we are with, with var. And underneath var, we have things like the log directory. And underneath there, we have actual files. and subdirectory, what's another one? And more, more stuff underneath of there. If we look at a ls minus i, it'll tell me that inside of this directory, var log, maybe messages is inode number this, and the HTTP directory is that, and fail log is that. And what this is really telling us when we look at the inode number is that over here in my actual disk drive, inside of the inode table, 
which is a segment of the disk space that's been allocated to store file metadata, there's actually a listing for inode 13573. And on this table entry for the var log messages file, which is inode 13573, we have things like permissions, user owner, and SE Linux contexts, file system ACLs, file attributes that are as, added to this file. Like there's all kinds of stuff here in this, this metadata. And then at the very end, we actually have pointers down to the actual blocks on our device that store the contents of our log messages file. And so when we access a file, like we use the less command to less var log messages. So what happens is the less command is executed. Uh, that tells us that we need to look up that inode because that's going to tell us whether we can or can't access this file. All right, so it comes over here to our inode entry and it looks at that metadata like the permissions. So it looks at who we are and looks at the permissions on the file to decide whether we are or are not allowed to open the file with less command. And it'll look at the SE Linux context and decide whether our less command is or is not allowed to access the file because of its SE Linux context and the context that's stored on this file. It'll look at things like file uh, access control lists to decide whether we can access it or not. And if all of that stuff works out and it turns out that yes, we're authorized to look at this file, then uh, we'll get a bunch of disk IO requests to go down to all these individual data blocks and grab them and reconstitute them and put them into the less command as input. All right, so that's what happens when we access a file. Uh, well, what happens if we create a file? So down here, I create my file. I just touch it. So if I touch it, I have to create an entry for it. So a empty file will have an I know number assigned to it. And up here in my inode table, there will be an entry created for 17357. And it'll get some permissions assigned to it, which will be the default file permissions according to the UMask of the user that creates it. The ownerships will be established. The SE Linux context will be created based off of where the file was created and the SE Linux policy. And then if I was actually like storing data, it would go out and start allocating data blocks to store the file's contents, right? So if I made a copy or I redirected data into this file when I created it, then it would go out and actually represent that data in the data blocks of my device. Uh, but I said I was making a zero length file, right? I just touched it. And so at this point, what's over in here is the space to store all those pointers to our data blocks, but there's no listings there because we haven't actually created file contents yet. Similarly, if I delete a file, so I come in here and I use RM to delete this file, then what happens is we come over to its inode over here and assuming that we're authorized to perform this deletion, it'll go ahead and wipe out all the data blocks that are on disk that are associated with that file, right? And it doesn't wipe them out, it actually marks them for reuse, right? So the data is still actually intact, but they are available to be reused for the file system. And then it will mark this guy, the inode table entry for reuse as well. So the inode table entry is still there, all the data is still in place, but it has been tagged so that if somebody else needs an inode number, this one is now available and it can be overwritten with fresh data for a new file. So that's a little bit on how file systems operate at the low level of like individual file representation. Are there any questions that, that I should take a look at here? There was a little back and forth about what boiled down to what is the base size of a uh, installation of RHEL 8 was the example. But I looked at my lab and Rick in chat looked at his lab. I got one from RHEL 9. He got one from RHEL 8. I think we have it pretty well covered. And really the answer is it's a couple gig, but it really comes down to what you installed. 
right? Because the rail operating system has so many options that you can install at install time. A minimal install is a couple gig, but you can get crazy big depending on what you chose to install at install time, especially if you like those uh, graphical interfaces, Scott. Uh, a minimal install is actually not a couple of gig. It's, a, it's some megs because a minimal install is about 300 packages. And that's it. But of course, you also probably want to store files on that device too. So you need to make right. your file system big. So you have some free space to store your files as well. So uh, you could probably get away with a couple of gig and that'll give you enough space to, to install that 300 packages and then have a little bit of space to store additional files and content on the machine. But yeah, it'll depend on what you install and how much stuff you want to store on the machine long-term. All right, so that being said, now we understand the flow of like how file systems interact with files and how processes interact with file systems. 